Alright, starting a five day trip. Headed on the Frost River Loop, which um, goes up Sawbill Lake and to Cherokee, and then west from there along uh, to Frost Lake and then the Frost River, and then back south, ending up uh, in Alton, and then back to Sawbill. So I ran out of water here, but if memory serves, I avoided all of the rock hopping, more challenging part of the portage, and I think the end is just straight up over this um, hill. So, don't know if I saved any time, but saved some energy. That was the last portage of the day, 180 rods, which is just over half a mile. Um, that one wasn't too bad. Still able to single portage, or single carry, so that's good. Welcome to Cherokee Lake. out a campsite. So made it to camp. It's a peninsula, not an island, but you see a lot of people around here and the first several ones I went to were occupied so I decided to take what I could get. It's still pretty cool. Right. I probably can't hear me in the wind, but nice view. Got the Somewhat sheltered fireplace ring, some wood, and so my water filter is dripping, but barely. So luckily I've got a gravity setup, so I did fill that up first thing, and we'll just let it drip while I set up the rest of the camp. And, um, I may just have to carry more water each day than I had hoped, because I was kind of hoping to just grab it on the fly. Um, but I don't know if that's going to work. I tried back flushing a little, didn't help a lot, so uh, we'll see how that goes and might end up doing that overnight and carrying the bottom one with me to, for refills. Another water update. So the good news. I'm getting a much better flow rate. I was able to back flush it. The bad news, in my back flushing, I first did that with the platypus and popped a hole in the bag. So that kind of sucks for trying to carry water. Um, did a patch with duct tape. That won't be 100%, but hopefully it'll be enough to keep it from leaking too much. So we'll see how that goes. You win some, you lose some. Unfortunately, without wind, there's not a 
bugs, but they aren't landing, aren't biting, so not a big deal. I'd highly recommend normally that you just embrace it and get your feet wet and it's just a lot easier, generally a lot safer because you're not trying to balance on rocks and it's just part of it. Um, makes it a whole lot easier to get in and out but I'm not following my own advice this morning. For now, I think mainly because it's just a short day and uh, it would be cool to get the campus out wet feet. But normally I just step in right away. In fact, a lot of times I just do that right in the morning even if I don't need to, just uh, get it over with. And then uh, when I get to camp, I've got dry socks and shoes that I change into. So it's not a big deal. You just assume your feet are going to be wet all day in the cold weather. If you wear wool socks, they'll stay warm enough. So now on to Gordon Lake. Uh, I think there's a lot of islands and inlets and stuff in here. So to, uh, look at the map here and see which way I'm headed. But I think generally that way and around. So I made it to camp. Uh, there are five campsites on Frost Lake, which is what I'm on, and first two were taken, third one was not. There's Dent up this one over quite nicely. It's got a nice sandy beach. Quite a few people fishing this lake. And then nice camp fire area with a ton of trees back there for my pick of hammock spots. And this will be the view from the fireplace, so not bad at all. That'll be the hammock spot for the night. Um, little sheltered. There is a good chance of rain tonight. Uh, mainly late into the night, like after 1 a.m. At least it was two days ago when I looked at the weather. So, little sheltered. Not coming, but once I put my tarp up, we'll be good to go. So calm the whole trip here. I got here around noon. And now got set up and waves are going on and the wind is really picking up. So that's perfect because now I uh, keep the bugs off of me while I'm at camp. And I had a perfectly smooth float uh, while it was calm.
Tonight is freeze-dried lasagna. And I've got my spoon. Another extremely calm morning, glass lake. Don't even hear other camps awake. The sound really travels over lakes, so normally if other winds are awake, you'll tend to hear them rustling. So today is going to be the most challenging day. Lots of river travel. I'm able to float my way through the first several portages, which is nice. Helps to go during the spring when the water's a little bit higher. This is the first one since getting out of um, Frost Lake that I've had to uh, actually portage, so. I'd be a little hard to canoe through, but this is only a 16 rod portage, so I've got a few loose ends in my backpack I'm going to carry first, and then grab the canoe, since it's a quick one, probably get a little snack and some other things, so just easy, easier rather than gearing all up for a single carry. Do it this way. Stretch the legs. I love the sound of rushing water, so this is a good spot to take a snack break. All the water in the boundary waters, most of it's not moving a lot, so uh, take advantage of it while I can. So I think based on, so the, there were two campsites taken on Frost, but when I went by the remaining two besides the one I had, they were empty this morning. I didn't really hear anything over there, so unless they got a really early start, I'm guessing I'm the only one headed this direction. Which means hopefully I will have my choice of campsites on Hub. I don't think most people go there from the other direction, so if anyone's going there, they're either behind me, they'd be a ways behind. There's not a lot of campsites before Frost. That's the kind of thing that's going to cause some unforeseen portages, but generally fairly quick to hop over. That looks like a bit of an upward climb for this portage. This goes into Pencil Lake. I'm in Chase Lake now. Last section has been a lot more like I expected. Not able to avoid the portages, so in and out, in and out.
couples of drop-ins along the last few portages, so being I'm the only one out here, I figured I could be quiet enough and won't scare them away, so I thought there'd be a chance of seeing them. So that's neat. Hopefully not the last, but he's off into the woods now. So this portage is uh, obviously, should be a portage here, but for the life of me, I cannot find where it starts, so I'm going to double portage this one with the backpack first, so I can try and figure out where I need to go. Maybe just really overgrown, because this is starting to get into the area that's not visited a whole lot. So, I know it's to the right, it needs to go around all this, so see what I can find. did find a trail for the entire time. So this is gonna be a heck of a thing trying to get the canoe through that. But that is what I'm gonna go back and try and do. So I kind of ran out of room through the brush trying to get the canoe through. So now I'm attempting to walk it through the river. Ooh, some slippery rocks. But this, I think, will be easier than trying to drag it through that brush. So that's what I got up ahead. There it goes. There's my backpack. Made it. Waist deep in some areas. Lots of slippery rocks, but lots of uh, branches in the way and also to hang on to. So, I'm trying to get my backpack, load it up, go a little ways and take a lunch break. Well, here's a portage I can see. Although it almost looks passable, but doesn't sound like it, so. I just attempted to run a beaver dam that was a little higher than I should have and tipped the boat so and tipped myself out but uh, it's like chest deep there and uh, my boat filled up with water so got that all emptied out and this will be a good test to see how waterproof all my stuff is because my backpack got soaked in that getting close to the next lake and then another lake right after that pretty quickly and then the long portage at the very end to get into Hub Lake. So hopefully my iPhone waterproof case survive. Yeah. Alright. Alright, there we go. Made it through the Frost River. Afton Lake now. Then a port short portage to Benton Lake, and then a very long portage. I have to look it up again, but I think it's getting close to a mile. And that gets into Hub Lake, which is my campsite for the night. So I need to filter some water, get ready for those long portages. But I could go without a beaver dam for a while. Two hundred and eighty rods, which is just shy of a mile. I'm gonna attempt to single portage it and uh, get to camp a little bit earlier than four, so that I can dry out whatever I find in my backpack because it's wet, along with all my clothes. So one more long one to go, and then it's into the lake that I camp in tonight. So here we go, Hub Lake made it. That portage really wasn't terrible. The first part, it's a long, steady uphill climb, which was kind of brutal. But 
after that. Uh, really pretty, pretty well maintained for now. And all right, made it to camp. I just took the first one. There's no information or reviews on these here. So, this seemed good enough, nice drying rack, rock. But, turns out, uh, nothing really got wet. So, my hammock might be a little damp, but hardly at all. And a couple minutes in the breeze, it'll be completely dry. So, that's good news. So, got the hammock and some things drying there. Laundry drying and getting a fresh pine scent at the same time. So, good morning. Another peaceful morning. I'm quite certain I'm the only one on this lake. It's a fairly large lake, um, but saw no signs of anyone else, and no one was following me. And not too many people come up here from their direction. I don't think. Uh, last night had a couple of bald eagles that kept flying over. I think they're probably nesting somewhere over there because I'd hear them cry out every once in a while. And also circle overhead here and all the other small birds giving off their warnings. To Zenith Lake, the portage from Duck to Zenith is a little tricky to find if you're going by a map. The map shows it on the right side of the stream that runs into the lake, but it's actually on the left side. And then shortly onto it, you, you take a bridge and get onto the left side. Made it. That's the last challenging, uh, or major challenge of the trip. So that was nice. It was a long portage, but terrain wasn't too bad. Um, came to one section where the trail was underwater, so I decided to trade places with the canoe and let it carry me for a little bit. That lasted only about 40 rods before beaver activity, and so then I had to find the trail again and resume. So, still well over a mile of portaging. Took one break in the middle to get water and stuff, but other than that, I was able to make it with a single carry. I am out of water, so I'm gonna fill up some water here on this lake, and then it's a little bit of river travel. Theoretically, I should not have any more portages, but I won't be surprised on this river if there's some beaver activity that requires some maneuvering. <clears throat> Just finished a bit of lunch, and first, so I passed the first campsite, 
little bit ago. I was going to stop for lunch there, but it's had a tent set up there. Didn't see anyone, but signs of civilization. So now it's just a matter of pretty much I'm going to take the first campsite I can get. So I'm going to check each one as I go south and hopefully find one before I get to the very end. All right, found a spot. Uh, it's actually uh, the one camp, the first campsite I checked on Alton I couldn't have actually find. So, and then this one didn't look like much on the landing. It's just a small little landing down there, but follow up trail and got this awesome view. Only downside is I have not found a good spot for a hammock, but I'm sure I could find something somewhere, so I'm gonna call it good rather than push my luck further south. I ended up finding a really nice hammock spot. Tarp might be a little tricky to get up, but I'm hoping it won't rain. But I'll, I can make it work if it does. Here's the view of my campsite from the lake. Headed out last day. It's been a really good trip. Um, the weather's been absolutely perfect. I was expecting a rainy weekend. Haven't had a drop of rain. There's supposed to be some today and it kind of looks like there will. Bugs have not been bad. You've got these gnats flying around your head a lot of the times, but they barely land. This one's like a freeway. It's very popular between the two lakes. You can almost drive a car through it. We got a landing strip. Civilization. It was a good two days without seeing another person. That's not something you experience too often. Kind of neat. And timing's about perfect because the battery on my GoPro is almost dead. The battery on my phone is almost dead, which is what I use for GPS. So, that is it for the trip.